but, but that's the reality, because when you look at the church attendance, the numbers in some places are really far lower than they used to be. In some other places, it's very strong, very, very good and wonderful. But you see, the love of God in Jesus Christ is for everybody. Now, if you find a cure, it's no good you keeping it to yourself when you know there's some other sufferers that need it. And the love of God in dealing with our internal disorders in the way in which love doesn't seem to be flowing out very easily and we're living at a time of real crisis, not only in this country but everywhere else. And God in Jesus actually once said to people, you are so wonderfully and greatly created and you need to discover your creator. I am one of those who believe that if you put God out of the equation, no matter what solutions you think you're making, they're not going to last. You're going to be repeating it again and again. Like I said to people, like at Christmas time, if you take Jesus or Christ out of Christmas, what you end up with is MS, Marks and Spencers, not Christmas. <laughs> you know? I like that. <laughs> I, on a serious note, going on that same route, is, is this a generation issue? You, if you do go into a church or you go into a service, people of a certain age will still be there. Yes. But it, it's the generation younger and the people who need to come after that. How will the church address that? Do you intend to attract the younger generation, generation in, in a certain way in the next 10 years? I mean, it isn't actually, we don't want to be into gimmicks, trying to put on things, because Jesus never did that. It was so much down to earth. And some of his challenges, he says to you, to them, unless you love me more than your parents, uh, your brothers, your sisters, you can never be my disciple. Unless you're willing to take up the cross and come and follow me, you can never be my disciple. So the message is challenging. But it should always be given in a way that doesn't give the impression of being anxious about something. You know, we can sometimes look so anxious written. Instead of being joyful and full of hope and full of love, I have been in communities where I've seen them absolutely transformed by the love of God. And it's a question of saying, uh, I'm a beggar, and I find where bread is. Come on, fellow beggars, come, let's go, so that together we can enjoy this bread. It is that kind of message which is actually important. The schools in this diocese, there's 200 of them, and, and I've been to their diocesan office to see what they're doing with schools. It's absolutely spectacular what the diocese is doing, and I, and I hope that the message of learning the story again of of Jesus and God's love, which in many ways actually shaped the United Kingdom. Um, you know, Bede tells us that actually it was the Christian faith which stopped the fighting going on between people of Yorkshire and people of Lancashire, simply saying to them, actually, you could be more humane and kind to one another because God loves all of you regardless of where you come from. That message is still is very timeless. So we're not going to put on things which simply attract, but actually make, make our own message of love, of care, of compassion, both in word and in action. Is it, is it almost like a mission of inspiration? Really? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why Jesus was very effective. Jesus was authentically, although Son of God, very human. And we've got to make our message more human. And to put it in a term you kind of used earlier, uh, and your analogy, and sorry to do this, but is the, are these events about focusing on religion and religion generally, or about getting bums on seats in church? No, you see, Jesus did never brought a new religion to be followed. Jesus brought the life of God. He wanted people to experience the life of God for which they had been created. And that life is of freedom, of liberty, of, of self-understanding, of actually being me. That's what Jesus came to bring, not a new religion. I don't want people to get more religious, as it were. I want them to be more human, but in the name of Jesus and loving him. It's a big task, a big yes, ask, yes, this, and, yes. and you've got a four days of events, and, yes. and, and, and basically you're, you're all here in force, that's me yes. this, yes. for bishops yes. everywhere, yes. all over. Yes. Is it very adventurous, this? Can you achieve what you want to achieve in four days? Well, we can do it by ourselves. Every Christian would say that any message which is going to last has got to have the fingerprints of God on them. That's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the director of mission, the one who is actually going to speak to people so that we can speak in a language which they can understand. You know, I can tell you, I was traveling from America um, way, way back in 1982 and going, <coughs> going back to, you, going, you know, and when I was traveling, there was a Russian guy uh, and I felt I had to tell him about Jesus, but I didn't speak Russian, he didn't speak English. And we talked, I tried to persuade him about Jesus. Eventually we got to Heathrow. I gave him a copy of my New Testament and we parted, never knowing. 
And you won't believe it. Seven years later, I'm in Moscow. American author of the final discussion. This man, Veranov, says to me, he now had learned English, you, you tell me I wrote about Jesus. And I said, when? When did I do that? We were traveling. He had been part of the KGB, had gone back, found an Orthodox priest, says to him, what, what is this about? So the Orthodox priest actually told him about Jesus, and he became a Christian. Uh, that's the kind of communication I'm talking about. Inspiration. Yeah. Look at the trouble you caused in Russia there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, can I ask you, Yeah. where did your inspiration come from for God? At the age of 10, uh, on my birthday, a missionary uh, came to my father's home. Um, he was invited to my, my tea party. He was my teacher of, of, of maths, because I loved maths. And he, he told me that, look, You've been baptized, you, you, the parents love God, but you personally yourself, you've got to decide whether you want God to love you. And the only way you've got to do it is to simply say, Jesus, you died for me, I want to love you, please give me your spirit. That's all I pray. And in the morning I found there was a tremendous change in me, and I have never stopped actually wanting to tell people. So that was the beginning of it. And of course there are many people who tell me I was born in a Christian home, therefore I'm okay. So I think I'm a Christian. Well, if you're born in a garage, does that turn you into a motor car? To be a Christian, you've got to be born of the Spirit. Each one of us be a son and a daughter of God. And that's what it's all about. Can I ask you also something that you know, anyone who talks or discusses anything about religion, yeah. some people will say, there's the image, there's the big iconic church, the big iconic building. In the community, what is a church now? What, what should it represent in a community? I what should it offer back to a community? Now, I think what the church still needs to offer are two things. A place of worship, that's very important because that's our home and where we gather. But it also should be about in the community doing good like Jesus. Because Jesus went about doing good. Uh, he was feeding, feeding the hungry, healing the sick and so on and so forth. So we should actually be in every part of the diocesan platform worshipping but also going about and doing good. And when we do the two things together without separating them out, then we'll be truly disciples of Jesus. Archbishop, thank you very much for joining us on Tea Time. Thank you. It's been